Brent Fikowski. Let's dive into it, folks. Let's get going. I'm here. I'm really excited. I want to make sure you all can hear me. Thank you so much for coming. We've got lots of notes happening. So I'm going to be going back and forth a little bit to different screens here. Um, I'm really excited. I hope you are too. We've got a lot to go through. So what I'd really like you to do is now I'm ready. I'm ready to rumble. Um, if you have a notepad or you're typing on your computer, I'd love for you to just focus on that. Focus on what I'm ready to teach and let's just get into this for a solid hour and I'm going to take questions at the end. We've got a lot to get through. So I want to do that. Um, why don't I just kind of start a little bit with uh, some CrossFit Games history. Um, you know, I'm nicknamed the professor because I try to do things mindfully. I try to have a reason for everything that I'm doing. Try and get the best score I can possibly get with the least amount of effort. And I consistently do that in my training and competition. Started the professor project in 2018. Uh, I wanted to help people move more efficiently, be more thoughtful, and, you know, include movement breakdowns, wad pacing, recovery prep, all that stuff, just to help people learn what I've learned and kind of just learn from me. I found that, uh, you know, I wish I could go back in time and have kind of what I'm giving to you guys uh, for myself when I first started in that first year, two or three years. I made a lot of mistakes along the way and uh, I've learned from them and I'm trying to help other people learn from the mistakes I've learned and also from the positive things that I've come across. So for the next 60 minutes, you're gonna learn about the J hook in the rope climb. I've been using my skills on the rope with my feet for a really long time. Um, I'm gonna pat myself on the back here and sort of tell you why I think I'm a really good person to talk to about rope climbs. 2015 regionals, I came third in the rope climb workout. 2017, I came first. 2018, I came first. The games in 2016, I came first in the workout that had rope climbs. In the games in 2017, I came third in that rope climb. At the Granite Games, I won a workout with rope climbs. And more recently, showed off my rope climb skills by winning a chipper in Dubai across the championships. I was able to pull ahead from my competition, uh, largely due to my efficiency on the rope. So I've been focusing on this movement for a really long time because the first time I was on a rope, not a lot of people know this, um, at a competition, was at the 2013 regionals and I was actually kind of close to getting a game spot and I slipped from fourth down to sixth. This was in Australia in 2013, largely due to the fact that my rope climbing efficiency wasn't there. So I've been honing this skill since then and I think I'm really confident, I'm really confident that you can learn from what I've learned and you can get better rope climbs from this video. So whether you're new to climbing the rope or you're just wanting to perfect the skill, um, I want you to have confidence to get to the top of that rope and to crush workouts with rope climbs in them. So at the end, I want you to stick around because at the end I'm giving away the rope climb cue sheet. So it's just gonna basically cover everything that I've already covered in this video. Um, it's really, I think it's a really valuable little sheet, so stick around till the end. Oh, I'm gonna click through this here. All right, here we go. Now I remember to use that. <laughs> um, so one of the things when I talk to the Professor Project members, premium members about anything is full focus always. So when you're working on something, try not to multitask. Try to just focus on that one thing with everything you have. You'll notice everything in your life is going to get better. Relationships, work, business, and CrossFit. Um, so extreme, own extreme ownership, be deliberate, and I expect the same now. I'm about to teach you some pretty crazy stuff. Let's go put down anything else you have on, maybe put on some headphones, and let's dive into this together. Uh, let's see here, all right. So I did mention this before, and you might be asking, well, why is Brent talking about this subject exactly? What makes me qualified to teach the rope climb? I've been working on breaking down this movement step by step. Step. You might have seen the video I did um, on YouTube already. If you haven't, we'll send it to you via email um, in this link after after the webinar, I'm going to send you the link um, so you can have even more resources to help you going. So at the end of this webinar, remember, I'm going to send you uh, the cue sheet and then we're also going to email you a video where I kind of go through a lot of the things I'm talking about right now. And I've been able to dominate a lot of competitions, a lot of workouts with this particular movement. And I think I'm really qualified to, to, give, you, to give you the information you need to crush workouts, crush your competition and crush people in your class uh, with, this, with this movement. All right, so whether or not you've been to the top of the rope yet, I wanna get you there either for your first time or what I'm really good at is getting up and down faster, more efficiently, stronger, safer, and uh, quicker than before. 
so rope climbs are a little dangerous in nature. I mean, other than every other crossfit movement, maybe other than the pegboard or maybe the ring muscle up, you're climbing a rope, you know, 15 feet in the air. So your feet, depending on how tall you are, could be anywhere from, you know, eight feet to five feet off the ground. Probably more than five feet. <laughs> um, probably about eight to, to nine feet, really. And that's pretty high. So if you're not in sync with each other, you smash your head into the ground, you could roll an ankle. Um, so I want to get you down that rope safely and quickly. That's going to be a big thing we talk about. So some equipment. Um, let's see. Let's go here. We're good now. Equipment. Uh, when you are outside, I recommend having sunglasses on. I think that's a really big key. And a baseball hat. Um, you know, keep the sun out of your eyes. If, if the hat's really secure, but if the hat is going to fly off and if you're doing a lot of other movements, I usually don't wear a hat, but for some people they like it. It's personal preference. Uh, shirt or no shirt doesn't really matter. Hands, grips, tapes, all that stuff. Good. Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, just give me, just give me one second here. Yeah. So, um, Sorry guys, I'm just, I'm, I really want to focus on this and I got some people in my house helping out. So I just want to make sure I'm fully focused on what I'm delivering to you guys right now. Um, give me one second here. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So hands, what I really recommend is taping your fingers. So the big one for me is taping this pinky right here. Uh, taping the crook of your thumb and sometimes right here. That's going to be where you get the most friction That's where you're going to get a lot of heat And so if you're doing a lot of rope climbs and if you happen to slide down on the way down accidentally And you're not going to use the tips I've given you and you slide down a little aggressively It can really heat up your hands and potentially tear your hands and we don't want that so consider uh, taping your hands and for shorts um, I'd recommend uh, longer compressions and uh, maybe even like two pairs of shorts. I'll usually wear two long pairs of shorts, uh, like compression um, shorts and then shorts on top of that. So if I do have to clamp the rope with my thighs, I'm not going to like shred my legs. And so for women out there, if you don't like wearing shorts, maybe consider wearing two pairs of leggings. Um, let's see. And double knot your laces. So that's super important. Double knot your laces and wear long socks. I usually wear two or three pairs of long socks. So that when that rope is wrapped around uh, my the front of my foot, I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about it, you know, uh, shredding the front of my shin. Uh, you don't get a lot of blood flow there. So if you've ever shredded the front of your sh shin with a rope climb, you know it takes a long time to heal. So always, 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 always wear those long socks. For me personally, if you don't have long socks, um, I just don't even do rope climbs. I'll do something else. I'll do pull-ups. Uh, make sure you've got that. You've got those long socks. All right go as I talked about there that pinky is super important and then obviously long socks the pinch all right now we're getting into the fun stuff the pinch the pinch is doo -doo -doo. so here's the thing when you do a rope climb what's usually gonna fatigue the thing that's usually gonna fatigue is your biceps your back and your grip, right? That's gonna be the thing that fatigues. So we wanna save that as long as we can because we know that that's gonna be the limiter. So we wanna minimize you know, that limiter. We wanna make sure that that isn't the thing that slows us down. So we use those as little as possible. How do we do that? We do that by climbing the rope primarily with our feet. Try to learn to climb a rope without using your arms so dominantly, using your legs to propel yourself up. Let's get into that. So. The pinch is where we do that. So here is a video of the pinch. Right, got my toe pointing up. I've got the rope right in the cradle there of my shin and my my uh, my shoe. That's where it is. That is most super important to get in that right spot. You take the other foot there. You bring the rope around. Wait for it, and then you pinch. And now. Both feet are going to be aggressively pushing into each other and both heels are going to be pushing together. Uh, I just posted on Instagram like two days ago going through that. That pinch is key. You should be able to support all your weight in that pinch by pushing your heels together and slamming both your toes on top of each other once you've mastered that technique. So 
Big mistake there is people try to pinch with their feet just side by side. They don't bring that foot all the way on top. They just keep them side by side. That's not enough. You do that, the rope's still going to slide down. You should be able to have your full weight in that rope. Um, and you're not grasping aggressively with your hands. So, like I said, toes up. Rope is cradled in the front of the shin. Yeah, it's all right there. Let's go over this one more time. Keeping it there. Now, as you swoop up and around, you're going to be swooping that rope all the way around into that J shape that the rope itself is making a J. And then you're slamming those feet together. This is super important. It should kind of hurt. It should be uncomfortable. The feet should not be side by side. Notice in the bottom picture there, the feet are side by side. We don't want that. We want them all the way on top. And you should be able to support the entire load. Notice how I'm not even grabbing onto the rope with my hands. My hands are open like this. So you can see that all the weight is truly in my feet in that picture. So now we're getting on to the fun bit. Uh, the sequence that every rope climb has. So you've got that pinch. The pinch is super important. But in order to properly use that, you need to make sure your body is in the right position. So the first one is you're going to jump up and you're hanging off the rope. So tall hang, hanging off the rope like this. There we go. Video coming at you. Hold on. Wait for it. Here he is. Come on, Brent. There he is. Jump up, hang. Pretty simple, right? And then you're gonna do a knee raise. So just like kind of the start of a toes to bar, the start of a knees to elbow. Super important part, and notice there that my arms are straight. As soon as you start bending those arms, you're using your biceps, you're using your grip, and you're using your upper back even more. You wanna keep those arms nice and long, have them really close together, and just hang and raise your knees. Then, once you've done that, so that's the first two steps. Once you've done that, the second cue is get that pinch. So that pinch we just talked about, which is like the most important part of the rope climb. You need to make sure you put yourself in that position, that long, tall position, knees raised, looking down at your feet, and then get that pinch. The third cue, once you have that pinch, is scoop your feet under your butt. So we'll show these ones now. Hang, knee raise, pinch, and now scoop your feet under your butt. That's the step that a lot of people miss. So the problem, if you miss that, is you're going to scoop and then your body's just going to be hanging. You're going to be hanging there, this big, big banana arch, and then you're going to be pulling your entire body weight up the rope while you're hanging like this. We don't want that. What we want is for the rope to get back nice and close. You can see in this photo how the rope is touching my groin, it's touching my chest, it's almost touching my chin, and my hands are at my face. So now I've got all this distance I can cover, and all I've done so far is a dead hang, a knee raise, and then I've scooped my feet towards my butt. All right. And then once we've done those, once we've done those, it's extension. So now this is where that, that really strong pinch comes into play. You've got that really, really strong pinch, all the weight is in your feet, and then you're just doing an air squat. You're aggressively pressing down, you're doing an air squat, and you're raising your hands up until you're fully extended. Your knees are locked, your hips are locked, your shoulders are open and your arms are long. Okay, here we go. Hanging. There we go. Now I rolled that all into one. Obviously that was a little quick. Show you again here. There we go. Slow motion. Scoop it in. And as I scoop in, I start pressing my legs up. Now I'm not even showing you my hands here because that's not the important part. The important part, I'm going to show you that one more time. The important part here is that I got the knee raise, I've got the hook, I've got it into my butt, and then I'm aggressively extending my legs. You'll see me, like I'm doing a really explosive air squat right here. Boom, straight up, locking the knees, locking the hips. All right, let's get to the next bit here. Now that's the thing is I'm not pulling with my arms that whole time. They're hanging, they're hanging, they're hanging, they're straight, they're straight, they're straight. Knees up, pinch, scoop, and then as I squat, I'm just lightly grabbing the rope to re-grab it. Now, the load on your hands here, how can I put this the best way possible? Having two ropes, having two hands on the rope at all times is ideal. 
So ideally, you never want to go hand over hand, even when you're doing this, uh, this aggressive squat, right? This air squat, we'll call it. But if you don't have the upper body strength, you newbie, you're a little dangerous, you might have to do that hand over hand. But what you'll notice here, I'm going to go through it. If you can, as you squat up, you're actually going to let go with both hands and re-grab. Because if, that, if your feet are scooped close enough to your butt, the weight of the rope, the, the center of mass is going to be close enough. You're not going to fall backwards. You're just going to go up. But if you don't have the strength, hand over hand, it's totally going to work just fine. All right. So watch this. This is what we're working on here. This is what I want. Is you're at the bottom here and up. I'm going to show you that one more time. And up. If you're quick enough, that's gonna, that is going to be the fastest way, the most efficient way, and uh, the way that's going to tax your grip the less, the least amount, sorry. But, you know, if, if you're not feeling super, super comfortable with that, then doing a little hand over hand as you air squat is going to be, you know, the next way to do it. And I'm going to show you that here. So again, that's not ideal, but as long as you're primarily squatting with your legs, it's, it's a little safer if you're a little scared, but I, I don't want you to do that if you can. So here's a really good full rope climb, slow motion. See how my arms stay straight, that right arm straight. I pinch, scooping my feet, pretty much leaving the rope with both hands at the same time. There we go. Let's play that one more time. Dead hang, knee raise, hook, scooping to the butt and immediately extending the legs and reaching as tall as I can. And again, pushing the hips towards the rope. There we go. That's what I want your rope climbs to look like, using that J hook. So now, descending. Descending the rope, there are a few different ways to descend the rope. Um, there, there are different ways to climb the rope as well. And there is another... There is another hook. We're not going to go through it in this particular webinar. We're not going to go through this particular hook in this particular webinar, but there is one called the heel hook. Professor Project Premium members, I went through this. And with the heel hook, it does allow for some different, uh, a different method of descending the rope that can be a little faster, but like everything, a little faster comes a little more risk. Today, we're going to talk about if you're just using this J hook, especially if this is new to you, what I want is for you to use this J-hook, and then on the way down, I'm gonna teach you how to descend with this J-hook. So typically, you've got a 15-foot rope. And at the nine-foot mark, there's a piece of tape. And the rule is, you have to bring both hands below that piece of tape before you let go, showing control. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna ascend, touch, and then descend, obviously, effectively. If you're using the J-hook, this is a strategy. So now, when you touch the top, if you're super, so for example, I'm about six feet tall, and if I fully re reach up my arm, I get to about eight feet. So you take eight feet, and you minus 15 feet, that leaves me with seven feet. So if I'm really well extended and I've timed that last pinch perfectly, my feet should be about seven to seven and a half feet off the ground, which means the black mark is actually above my feet right now, right? So if I'm fully standing up and I'm reaching up really, really tall, then the, the black line is actually above my feet. So once I touch, all I need to do is reach both of my hands down to where my feet are, just above my feet, and I should be fine. So that's kind of what I'm gonna talk about right now. You basically are going to immediately reach down below that marker, fall with the other hand, unclamp your feet, and let go. So I'll go through that real quick here. This is a, kind of a close up here. Touch, and then I'm gonna reach down right to my feet. I'm gonna be in that position briefly, and then I'm gonna unhook my feet. Now, if you're not as tall as me, you're gonna do that exact same thing, but you're gonna do it in two, two successive steps. So for me, I'm touching, I'll reach down to here, and then I'll reach all the way down, all the way down again, and then I'm off. But if you're a little shorter, you have to loosen that J hook a little bit, allow it to slide down below the nine foot. As you're doing that, you're gonna ungrip, ungrip, 
and then reach down to just above your feet. So we'll go through that here. That's how I would do it. And there we go. So um, that's basically it with the descent. If you if you are a little shorter, sorry, I don't have the video here. I thought I, I thought I prepared that for you guys, but. If you are a little shorter, what you need to do is you just need to loosen that J-hook a little bit, allow the rope to slide down until your feet are sliding. You keep your knees locked the whole time. Keep your knees locked, allow your feet to slide straight down. And then, uh, and as you're doing that, you're gonna go hand over hand, hand over hand until your feet are well below that black line. And then you do what I showed you there where you whoomp, swoop straight down. All right. So here is another complete rope climb, including descent. Jumping up with straight arms, knee raise, clamp, feet up, there we go. Again, touch. And down. So, I'm gonna talk about a few other things regarding rope climbs. Now that I've kind of went through the technical aspects, hold on here. <laughs> um, talk about the technical aspects here keep in mind that the more these you do in a row the more rest you're going to need but try to keep the reps fast no matter what so I always like to say there's no such thing as a slow rope climb there's only more rest so for something like running you're not going to just stand there catch your breath and start running again you'll just start running slower the same would be true for let's say rowing um, even burpees. I like people to just continue doing burpees, even if that pace is, gets a little slower. Um, you know, you're still just moving. You're still chipping away. But something like a rope climb, you're better off keeping those reps nice and sharp, nice and fast, and then just resting a little longer. So if a rope climb takes you, you know, five seconds or eight seconds, I don't want you hang, climbing up the rope, <sighs> taking a big breath, climbing up, because every second you're on that rope, is energy and it's wasted energy on your forearms, your biceps, your back, your breathing, all that stuff. I want you to rest on the ground. There's only one place to rest in a rope climb and that's on the ground. Um, so just knowing how to pace those rope climbs is something that takes practice. So once you've got that first rope climb, try and get that second rope climb. And then um, as you get going, start to look at workouts you've had in the past or workouts that are coming up maybe in competition or have been programmed at competitions that you're planning to go to or even how your gym programs them and think what's the sort of sets and rep range that I'm looking at for um, a rope climb workout right and I'm looking at sets of 10 I'm looking at sets of three you know three two one five ten fifteen and then start practicing those just on their own do 10 rope climbs for time do 15 rope climbs for time do five rope climbs for time see how long that takes you see how long your rests are and you knowing that and having that list being like, man, you know, I've done all these like rope climb specific testing. I know about how long it takes me, how long I need to rest, how often do I need to chalk, all those sorts of things. You do that repetitively in your own training. Um, then when you get to a competition, you'll find yourself being a lot more prepared. So doing that really like single modality testing where it's just X amount of rope climbs for time and learning, you know, some efficiency tips and, uh, you know, how long it takes you for those rope climbs, filming yourself, timing your rests when you're done. It's going to be super, super valuable for when you do have to do a workout that has a bunch of rope climbs. You're going to know, hey, you know, I rested 10 seconds between rope climbs. My rope climb started at five seconds per rope climb and the slowest one was seven. That's solid. And then when you come to a workout that has 10 rope climbs, you can start to add that up and be like, okay, how long is that going to take me? How long does that lead me to do the row? What if I do this unbroken? And then you start learning as opposed to just blindly doing a bunch of rope climbs. A little tip there. That's a little, uh, little extra pacing tip. All right. Over overarching safety tips. Um, practice on lower heights. So if you're scared, practice not going as high. Uh, get a ladder and put some tape up at maybe 11 feet, right? So, uh, you know, for me, if I can reach and I can touch about eight feet, I might put the tape at, you know, 11 or 12, which is maybe one good pinch. Do that for a bit. Then put the tape at 12 feet. Do that for a few weeks, a couple sessions, and so on and so on. Um, but always have a target. Always work to a target. Uh, I don't like when people just climb the rope to like a, a arbitrary amount. No, like always have a target so you can practice touching, regripping and then descending safely. Uh, if you can, 
Go somewhere that has a really nice crash pit or foam pit. If you are really, really scared, go to a gymnastic center. Maybe there's adult open gym. Um, try climbing without that fear of injuring yourself if you fall. And uh, really, as soon as you start practicing, one of the most important parts is practicing coming down, right? And so like the method I've shown you is the method I found works the best when you're doing the J hook. Like I mentioned, there is the heel hook and I cover that in the Professor Project Premium. But for that J hook descent that I've talked about, I think it's really good, but you might find one that works better for you that feels safer. So just as much as practicing the ascending part of the rope, the descending practice is just as important, maybe more important. So practicing that and being mindful of that early in your practice uh, with rope climbs is going to be super valuable. Ooh. All right. Let me get back to this here, folks. So muscles in the body should be developed to do this movement. Uh, obviously grip strength, right? So anything you can do to strengthen your grip for this is going to help. I find for this, honestly, the best thing is just doing rope climbs. Um, I've tried some other grip specific things and I haven't noticed a very direct correlation in my grip strength. Uh, it's called fatigue in, um, in rope climbs. So I'm going to get into what I would do to improve that grip strength. And that's essentially doing strict pull-ups, uh, trying to double overhand, double underhand, and doing pull-ups on an actual rope. So I talk about uh, up and down uh, like a rope like this. So what you can do is you can actually just have a good towel and you can hang that towel over a pull-up bar. So you've got the two ends of the towel like this and you can just do pull-ups like that or you can actually hang onto a rope, alternate your hands for every set, you know, do five strict pull-ups, rest a bit, switch hands, five strict pull-ups. That's gonna really, really help develop that grip strength. Now, like we talked about, we want to rely on our technique. We want to rely on primarily our foot position and our quality pinch and then our leg drive to get up the rope. But no matter how good that gets, your grip and your biceps will still be the limiter. Um, I'm a classic example of that. I do everything pretty well on the rope, but still my grip um, is usually the limiter and why I have to take a break. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Next, slider roo. So I want to give you a little, uh, little chat on exactly what Professor Project Premium is. So I hope you learned something today from today's webinar. And I've been perfecting this move for years. Um, and I've seen premium members practice this footing, this pinch on boxes, and they give it a go on the actual rope. And bam, they got their first rope climb. Uh, we've got Victoria and Alexis, um, sorry, Alexia Morgan here um, that are Professor Project Premium members that have both really, really um, excelled with their rope climb. I was even talking to Victoria. She was able to win in the master's division in uh, at the Granite Games, and I was able to help her with her rope climbs in the warm-up area a little bit. And she, as she's posted here, she said it really helped. Um, and so we're getting members in the Professor Project Premium, Premium getting that first rope climb and improving on their rope climbs. So I'm gonna ask you that question. Have you ever had that moment, that movement broke down to you just like I did with this rope climb? I've done that with the rope climb uh, and the thousands of member, thousand plus members of the Professor Project team have had the access to that for about a year now, crushing it with rope climbs. And I've done that with a lot of other movements. I've done it with the burpee. I've done it with cycling hang cleans. I've done it with uh, toe to bar. I've done it with ring muscle ups. I've done it with bar muscle ups. I've done it with, um, I'm doing one right now on legless rope climbs. Uh, you name it, I've done it sandbags, uh, stones. Farmers carry, yoke carry, pulling sleds with your arms, pushing sleds, all these different things. We've got all these things. Uh, you know, I'm making these videos to try and help everyone get better and learn from the mistakes I've learned and also the successes I've had. So when you do, if you are interested and you do become a premium member, you're gonna get full access to content like this for over a year. Uh, you've got 60 plus movements strategy videos, efficiency videos, things like bar muscle throat climbs, ski ergs, bar, barbell deadlifts, trap bar deadlifts. Uh, we've got pacing videos, strategy videos. We've got half a dozen nutrition videos with the nutritionist I've been trusting for seven years now. We've got templates and worksheets so you can have take home homework uh, and stuff you can bring to your gym that's gonna actionably help you kind of reach your goals. Mindset videos, lots of videos on mindset. 
and a bunch of bundles on things like the powerless and uh, you know double unders. I've got a private community. I'm on this Facebook page almost every single day. I'm answering every question that all the professor project members have for me, as well as other coaches that are coming on there answering questions. And I'm not the only one giving this advice. You can kind of see in this shot here, we've got Chandler Smith, we've got Cole Sager, we've got Patrick Donner, and then some local people that have been helping me like Ben Stevens and Kevin Lutz. Uh, right. Here's just a little, a little uh, sneak peek at kind of what's behind the scenes once you get in there. All these movement videos on the left-hand side. Um, you know, everything from freaking the devil's press with the dumbbell. We've got overhead walking lunges with dumbbells. It kind of gets, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot. I've, I've tried to give you every single thing I know um, in video content, in instructional content, Excel documents, Word documents, PDFs, and all sorts of stuff just to kind of like kind of take out everything I know uh, and, you know, get it into one into one place. So like, let's say I was to croak, um, everything I've learned at least lives on the professorproject.com. So do you think if joining premium meant you might move a little better, would you consider doing it? I know the answer for me is would have been yes when I first started. We've even got games athletes in the professor project learning from my videos. I won't name who they are. Um, I told them I won't, but there are, there are games athletes that have learned from my videos and have thanked me for you know the descriptions like the one I gave you today on rope climbs. And there's a 30-day money back guarantee. So if you're not super sure, um, you know, it doesn't hurt to give it a whirl. And then if you're not convinced that it's really what you thought it was or something that's really gonna help you, 30-day uh, money back guarantee. No one's asked for it yet because you know we're delivering good content. But if that ever did happen, I wouldn't hesitate at all. Um, here's an example of a video creating pacing strategies where I talk step through step, step by step. If I did a workout I've never done before, how would I pace that workout? And I go through all the steps of the process by which I create a pacing strategy for a brand new workout. Anyway, we're almost at question and answer time here. Uh, I'm gonna give you a good chunk of time to ask some questions. I've got a few here. Uh, let's see. Um, so for sticking around, for those of you watching, Usually our year membership is $177. Oh, where are we here? Let's get to that page. Oh. <laughs> um, and so right now for the next like 24 hours, we've got a sale uh, for 147. You get all the content that's ever existed on the site and all the upcoming releases. We're having a whole module on the shoulder, how it works, how to identify if you have any mobility issues and then what uh, you can do to help kind of solve those on your own, kind of like a you know, little mini tutorial for you to help diagnose your own issues. And all that sort of stuff is continually coming, more and more movement reviews. And I've got a couple other things I can't talk about yet, but some really cool, exciting videos along with the hundreds of videos we already have there. Let me see here. There it is. All right, so We've got a 24-hour sale. We're gonna have a little button here that comes up in a couple minutes, in about eight minutes, um, once we get through some more questions, that uh, there's gonna be a link on the screen. You can sign up underneath. There's gonna be a button for you to push. I'll get back to this. Um, or you can copy and paste. Let me see here. I'm gonna copy and paste this bad boy. And I'm gonna comment as the professor project in here www.theprofessorproject.com slash webinar dash thanks. There we go. All right, commenting that now. Copy and paste this into a new window and become a premium member. I'm gonna take a little bit of time here for some questions. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I've got a bunch that were uh, pre-asked, so I'm gonna get into those as well. Um, yeah, so I'm willing to take some live questions. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you found some value from watching this video um, and learning a bit about what I found to be successful in rope climbs. I think that the, the descent, like I said, is super important. The pinch is super important. And then that sequence, a lot of people might get that pinch, but they mess up the sequence and they're still not properly driving from their legs. So hopefully all those things combined, when you get the opportunity with your next rope climb, hopefully soon, with this COVID-19 craziness that's going on, 
Um, but when you do have access to a rope, hopefully you can actionably take some of these tips that I've given you. And like I said, we are going to be uh, emailing you the link. We're going to be emailing you the link for this video that kind of breaks down some of this stuff, a YouTube video for you to watch. And um, we're going to make sure we email you as well with um, this coupon. So on the screen right now, we've got 30 rope climbs. That's the coupon. And if you go to the webinar thanks page, a lot of that's on there. All right. Uh, let me see. Can you get the bonus t-shirt when you live in Netherlands? Hell yeah, brother. Yep. We'll send you that bonus t-shirt to the Netherlands. I am 99.9% .9 sure of that. And even if we can't, I'll make sure I personally get one to you. So yes, the, 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 the t-shirts are definitely sent, um, and we, uh, to, to Netherlands. Let me see here. What else do we got? Uh, ba, ba, ba. All right. So get that ready. Um, do you think that the professor project is good for someone entering into CrossFit at 46 years old? Yeah, I think so. I definitely think so. Um, you know, the, what I've tried to do is with each video, there's sort of, there's layers to it. So for example, um, I'll be completely honest with you. There are some videos that might not be useful to you, right? So for example, there's a video that is, you know, refining the finer skills of a bar muscle, right? So that might not be for you, but there's a lot of videos on rowing, on a salt bike, on touch and go deadlifts. And those are for everyone. Those are for beginners, the dumbbell snatch. And those things I found have been really helpful with beginners, with masters athletes that are trying to perfect the basic techniques. And then from that, as they get better and better, they'll get better and better quicker because they're working on the detailed parts early. As they get better, then they can start getting into the more, you know, uh, intermediate or advanced things. But there's some really good videos on there on pacing ideas, on mindset, and on just the basics, right? The dumbbell snatch, the barbell shoulder to overhead, how to cycle a clean. So not only obviously how to get the barbell from the floor to the shoulder effectively, but how to bring it down quickly, effectively, safely, immediately touch the floor and be in a position where you can clean it again. And that's something that I think a lot of people, uh, you know, don't focus on enough. And so, yeah, I think there's a lot of content in there for everyone, whether that's beginner, intermediate or advanced. What else do we got here? Ba, ba, ba. Uh, rope climbs with or without grips. Um, if you're using the grips for something else in the workout, then yeah, just leave them on. Um, something you can experiment with. I don't have a pair with me right now, but um, is keeping them on a little bit loose. So the actual holes of the grips, keeping them on like just here and not past the big knuckle. So if you keep them here and not past the big knuckle, then you can kind of slide them off. But yeah, I'll do I'll do rope climbs with grips. It's not that big of an issue. Um, but just know that the thicker the grip, the wider your hand has to go. And so if you have really thick grips, it start, starts to make it harder and harder to grip onto something. So try and find some thin grips. Um, Rue grips are good. Victory grips are good. Uh, some stuff from Raylan and some stuff from Pixel. Those are kind of the four brands. Bear Complex is another fifth brand. Those are, those are all quality grips. Um, I definitely have done rope climbs with grips and have done just fine. But if you can try and do rope climbs with bare hands and just a little bit of tape, like I said, on that pinky, sometimes on this finger and then the hook grip on the thumb. All right. Any other, any questions and any questions, even uh, if they're not rope climb related questions, I'm happy to answer. When you're pinching, are you pinching with your heels or more the arch to the top of the foot? So it's, it's the entire foot really. So what I like to think the main things I'm thinking about with the J hook. So we've got this foot here and then this one wraps over and around. So I'm thinking about pinching these two toes together. So this toe up, this toe down, and then pushing these two heels together. Cause remember the rope is in between, right? The ropes right here. It's right here. And so if I'm, if I'm pinching these together and then pinching that, it's it's gonna have that rope in place. Um, so yeah, I'm really thinking about pushing those heels together and then pushing my two toes together by raising this one up, pushing that one down, squeezing together. So those are the, the two things really, here and here. 
Um, in the descent when sliding, the pinch grip, how do you stop your hands also sliding and getting secondary rope burn? I feel, I find I'm either pinching and not sliding or going down too quickly. Like I said, that takes a bit of practice. Um, and so like how I like to do it is I maintain a really strong pinch. I keep that pinch really strong and I'm tall enough that my feet are below the nine foot line. So I can touch, touch the top, come back down, I'm holding on, but I'm really holding on with my feet. And then I just grab, grab, let go. So there's never any like sliding. If you need to come down a little further, there's really, there's two things you can do. So the first one you can do with the J hook, with the J hook, remember that you can loosen that J hook just a little bit and you just have to be really deliberate. Okay, so you have to hold on tight and you have to go grip, grip, and you, just, you have to hold onto it tight, right? Um, think about twisting in a little bit more as opposed to holding on like this. Uh, and then the other option is try to master the heel clamp, okay? So the heel clamp uh, is a, something I talk about in the Professor Project uh, Premium. And I don't have enough time to cut, it's, it's just too much to cover in 60 minutes. Um, but it's a different type of clamp and that one can allow you to slide down the rope a little quicker. Uh, you might be able to Google it as well, the heel clamp. Um, there might be some, I, I might have my video on YouTube still, I'm not sure. But the, the J hook, for the J hook, it's just about being deliberate on the way down. And if you can get up fast enough, you can spare those extra few seconds of bang, bang, and then let go. Um, it's, you know, there's, there's always the risk of burning your hands. I mean, I've, I've got some blisters on my hands before just because you're playing with that line. But uh, it's just something you have to practice, you know. Sorry, there's no easy answer to that one. Uh, ooh, when do you breathe in and out on the rope climb? <sighs> Typically speaking, when you're doing a shorter movement, you breathe in during the eccentric, the easy part, you breathe out during the concentric or you potentially have to hold your breath during the concentric so for example with a deadlift if you're doing multiple deadlifts you're going to get to the top of the deadlift as you come down you're going to breathe in and you'll breathe out when you reach the top again however if it's really heavy you have to just hold your breath the entire time with a rope climb you know rope climb takes five seconds eight seconds right depending on how fast you do it so maybe 10. You just kind of have to be breathing the whole time. It's sort of like doing a handstand walk. There isn't a specific time that you should breathe or should not breathe. You just have to remember you should be breathing. And I find that when people are really, really gripping tight with their hands, they forget to breathe. Whereas if you're focusing on pinching with your feet, your upper body is going to be a little more relaxed and it's going to allow you to breathe. Um, as far as how to breathe, in this movement, it's not something, honestly, that I put a lot of thought into. And I think it's because for me, um, breathing isn't usually the limiter. But if you find that breathing is a limiter for you on the rope climbs, I'd recommend filming yourself and doing, you know, maybe five rope climbs for time. Don't think about it too much. And then watch the film and look at yourself and saying, where am I breathing? When am I breathing? And then the next time you breathe at those same points, maybe rest 10 minutes, do it again, breathe at the same time, but then just try to breathe deeper. So if you find every time you pull up, you hold your breath, and then you do something like that, try and do that same pattern, because obviously there's there's some value to that, you're doing, you're probably breathing at the right time, but then just breathe, just with more, with more vigor and a little more determination, and that should help. Um, gloves are good for rope climbs. I personally don't like gloves for rope climbs. Um, like I mentioned about the grips is it's just thicker, right? Um, you've got more of yourself on the rope. Um, and so if, if you've just got more distance from your actual hand to the rope, it's going to feel like instead of the rope being this big, it's going to feel like it's this big, right? And so the bigger that rope feels, the harder it is to grip, right? I mean, this is harder to grip than you know a really small like bottle of pills or something right um in these crazy times should i focus on strength building or aerobic capacity it's up to you depending on your goals um and depending on the equipment you have available to you right so 
depending on what your goals are for fitness, if you want to compete, if you are just doing this for health and longevity, um, write down what your goals are, write down what you have access to at this current time. And this could go to any point in your life, but obviously during COVID-19, it's a little, little different than usual. So write down what your goals are, um, write down what you have access to, what equipment, what your schedule is like, and then find a place where those two things meet. And so if you feel like you don't have a lot of equipment and one of your goals is to get aerobic capacity, then go out and go for some running, go for some biking, uh, some jogging, rowing, whatever that looks like. But maybe you don't have access to that. Maybe you're in a city and the only thing you have access to is a barbell. So it's like, hey, let's get strong. Um, I think that's really up to you. It's a personal question. I'm not sure exactly what your goals are. Uh, Anna Condon. Thanks, Brent. Being short, my descent is the worst part. Yeah, so Anna, what I would really recommend is looking up the heel clamp. Um, you can watch Rich Froning. He does it really well. I do it quite well. And I think there's there's a video on the Professor Project Premium where I go through the heel clamp. And yeah, that's going to be that's gonna be the game changer. Um, like I mentioned, the J-hook is really valuable for getting up the rope. Um, there's not quite enough time with questions to kind of get through it would take me another 35 minutes <laughs> to go through the heel clamp and maybe we'll do a, a call on that at some point, do a webinar on that. But I would look into the, uh, to the heel clamp. Um, I'm going to give you guys the, the cue, the, the website here for, um, the, There we go. So head to that website, copy and paste that. Um, the cue sheet, that's kind of everything we've talked about today. And uh, yeah, you should go to that as well as you can uh, go to, hold on here, ba ba ba. There we go. So those are kind of the two websites uh, we've got there. One of those is gonna give you an opportunity to use this discount code right here. 30 rope climbs uh, for a discounted rate on the yearly membership. And also the other one's gonna have that cue sheet. So you can use that, bring it to the gym next time you come and remember all these cues that we talked about today. Any tips for fast and safe uh, box jump overs? Well, I've got a thorough video on the Professor Project Premium where I cover box jump overs. Um, but uh, if, you, you know, if you're not a Professor Project Premium member, I would, I would film myself. Um, I would film film yourself doing the box jumps and then go and watch some competition videos of people like myself doing box jump overs in competition. Um, there's a bunch of workouts from old regional and games workouts where you know box jump overs are part of it. Film yourself uh, and and then compare that film to those athletes and see what you're doing different. That's one of the most important things. You got to be a, an athlete that learns, an athlete that can that can visually see differences in things and uh, make those changes. So that's what I would do um, because I'm not sure what you're struggling with. Maybe you're doing everything right, uh, but if you're doing something wrong, you need to be able to find it by watching the video. Uh, does the hook or ascent change when you use short ropes in comp? Uh, nope, nope, same hook. Or I might try and go legless if it's really short. I might just jump and, but no, long or short, I use the same clamp. Good question. Are shoes important for the J-hook? My coach says my technique is okay, but I slide. And I'm not safe on my J-hook when I dry the legs. Well, I've, I've never seen a shoe be the issue. So I would venture to guess you're not pinching hard enough or your feet are side by side, or you're not pinching hard enough. Um, but if, you, if you're pretty sure that you are, then maybe you need different shoes. I wear them, uh, the um, Reebok Nano, and those are really good. They hold up for, you know, I've done hundreds of rope climbs and they look like the day I bought them. So I would look into the Reebok Nano. I'm also sponsored by Reebok, but um, I'd look into the Reebok Nano. If you still think you're driving with your legs and your hook is good. Um, ba, ba, ba. what grips do I use? I typically, I currently use grips from victory grips. 
victory grips. I like those. Do you think anyone has it in them to become a competitive athlete, even if when they start, they are always in the lowest rank of the class? I am never one to tell someone what they are or are not capable of. I believe that anyone can become better if they work hard at it. So if, uh, if you work hard at something, you can get better at that something. But I can't tell you for sure exactly how good you're going to be. I mean, the reality is, if right now I said to myself, Brent, you're going to win the 100 meter dash at the Olympics. The reality is that's not going to happen, right? 29 years old. Um, I'm not super fast. And sprinting's a young man's game. So it's definitely highly unlikely that I'm going to win the Olympics in the 100 meter dash. But will I get faster if I work on it? Yes. And so the same is for you. I don't know exactly what competitive athlete means. And I'm not sure how good your class is. Maybe your class is really, really fit. And so the fact that you're at the bottom of that class or someone's at the bottom of that class, maybe they're actually quite good. You know, it's, it's all big fish, small pond, small pond, big fish. So really what it comes down to is, um, you know, why are you working out? You know, what are your goals? Do you want, and usually those goals, I like making goals. I talk about this in the Professor Project Premium all the time with some mindset videos. I talk about have a why. Why am I training? Why am I working out? Why do I go to the gym every day at 6 a.m.? Like, why, why am I here? And that should be an answer to, you should have the answer to that question. You should have the answer to that question. And it shouldn't be solely about beating someone else or it should be something completely in your control. I want to get in better shape. I want to be the best version of myself. I want to be more competitive. I want to lose weight. All these different things. Things are in your control, not I want to come fifth place in this competition because maybe five people show up that are just way better than you, right? So try not to make goals related to other people. Um, but I think anyone can get better. Uh, let's see. Do you jump into first queue? Yeah, I jump. Um, the jump isn't super necessary though. As long as you jump and you're catching with straight arms and when you're hanging with straight arms, your feet aren't touching the ground. So if you do jump, make sure that you jump and you grab the rope with straight arms. I feel like I always give up during the pinch because it really hurts my ankles. They're way, way around it. Um, make sure you wear thicker socks. Wear two pairs of socks. More socks and maybe try a different pair of shoes. Um, but it, it will hurt. It does hurt a little bit. But wear like three, three layers of socks, long socks. That should help. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, someone asked about supplements. Um, I'm not going to get into that too much here. Like I'm not a, I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist. I've, I've taken recommendations from my, um, oh, and I, well, then some people are getting out and enjoying the sunshine. Um, I've taken advice from my nutrition, my dietitian on what I should take. And I'm not really, you know, at liberty to give exact advice to you. I think the biggest thing people need to remember is supplements are supplements. They are supplementing what you're eating. So the most important thing is what's in your fridge and what's in your pantry, right? Um, you know, are you eating lots of good vegetables? If you're eating meat, is it good quality clean meat? And you're best off spending your money and your time and investing it there as opposed to dumping it into creatine and da 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 da. That being said, I mean, there is value in creatine. Creatine is one of the most researched supplements. BCAAs, um, you can get most of the branched chain amino acids you need from a whey protein and from, uh, you know, steak and what else? Yeah. So, I mean, there's value to those, obviously like a ZMA or a vitamin D fish oil. Those are kind of the basic supplements that, um, that have value and, you know, some diets are lacking those, but you know, at the end of the day, they're supplements. They're not, uh, they're not going to, the answer, the answer comes from you the answer comes from a routine. Good sleep, warm up, cool down, and eat healthy. All right, folks, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to answer two more questions, and I got a booby. I got a call here soon. I got to jump on. But thank you so much, everyone, for coming. I hope you learned something. It was a lot of fun teaching you. Sorry about the little uh, um, delay there at the beginning, uh, working with a new program. It'll be all slick for next time. 
Can upper body strength be the limiting factor here? Absolutely. Upper body strength relative to your body weight is definitely going to be a limiting factor with rope climbs. Technique is going to definitely help that. But if you know you weigh a certain amount, let's say you weigh 200 pounds and you can't do a strict pull up um, because you don't have strong enough biceps and back and grip, then you're probably going to have a tough time doing a rope climb no matter how good your pinch is. Uh, best progressive exercise for handstand walk. I go through this in the Professor Project Premium. I've got some really good videos on slowly progressing towards the handstand walk. Love for you to join and become a member. But if you don't become a member, I would recommend uh, doing planks and then slowly doing, you know, like, like bridges, planks, your hands up in front of you, and then slowly just raising your feet. So you put your feet on a box, you put your feet on a bigger box, bigger box, put your feet on a wall, and slowly, if you're just more and more competent, being upside down, putting more and more of your own body weight onto your hands in an inverted upside down position. And if you can hold a handstand hold, pretty soon you'll be handstand walking. All right, folks, hopefully this was helpful. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, sorry again about that intro. Um, we're all learning here. You're learning about rope climbs. I'm learning how to do webinars. So we're having a good time. All right, I am out of here. Thank you so much, everyone. Again, have yourself a great day.